Hey guys, Level Cap here, and this is me playing Battlefield 4 at E3. I'll be back in just a second. That right there was the assault class using the AK-5C assault rifle. Uh, it had a green laser sight on there, a red dot sight. Now check out in front of this tank, you're going to see a incendiary grenade right there. Doesn't that look freaking cool? It's sort of, uh, uh, the difference between an incendiary and a frag is that an incendiary sort of catches on fire there and it lasts a little bit longer. Uh, you can actually block off hallways with those. It's pretty cool. If anybody gets near it while it's detonating, it will absolutely kill them. So uh, you have a bunch of different grenade rounds too. You have regular frags, incendiary rounds, and flashbangs. Now I'm going to pop out of the tank here in a second and I want you to check out the gun that I have. This is the RFB. It stands for Rifle Forward Ejection Bullpup. It's a semi-automatic, basically sniper rifle. And uh, if you notice on the front of the rifle, I have a foregrip, but it is an angled foregrip. This is a Magpul design foregrip and it allows players to grip the weapon differently. It actually functions differently than a normal foregrip. The traditional vertical foregrip from Battlefield 3 has been changed in its function in that it now allows you to fire more accurately when firing from the hip and while moving. The angled foregrip allows you to reduce some of your initial recoil with the weapon, so they serve different functions. If you want more accuracy, the angled foregrip is going to help you out when you're standing still. If you want to be able to be more accurate while shooting from the hip or on the move, then the vertical foregrip is going to be a little bit more for your style. You'll also notice that I have a green laser sight mounted on this weapon. They also have the red laser sight from Battlefield 3 in here, and from reading the description, it seems like the green laser sight is going to basically make you a little bit less visible from a distance, so it's not going to be quite as easy to spot somebody who's got a laser sight on their gun. Uh, however, to blind your enemies with the green laser sight, you're going to have to be a little bit more precise and shine it directly in their eyes. Now with the red laser sight, you're going to be way more visible at a distance, uh, so it's just going to be easier to spot you out if you're running around with it, but it's also going to be easier to blind your enemies by just sort of uh, pointing in their general direction. So you kind of have that trade-off there. The green one uh, allows you to be a little bit more stealthy, and, but you have to be more precise when blinding your enemies. Both of the laser sight attachments, I believe, make you more accurate when you hit fire, uh, probably to the same degree. Okay, now I want to talk about the new squad perk system. Everybody always complained about squad perks overlapping in Battlefield 3. It required a bit of coordination among squad members to make sure that squad perks weren't overlapping or making sure you had the right ones for the right maps. Uh, basically just an unnecessary amount of coordination for a very simple system. Well, it's been completely overhauled in Battlefield 4. And if you check in the lower left-hand corner, you'll notice that there's four squad perks um, and the first one is lit up, that one is sprint. The next one down the line is ammo, and I don't have access to that one yet. The way I get access to that is uh, we get squad points, so suppression, assist points for my squad, reviving squad members, giving squad members ammo or health will rank up the entire squad's perks. So uh, if I'm at a level two, somebody else in my squad is also going to be level two. I can't be level three and somebody else in my squad be level one. Now, what's cool about this system is that the order in which those perks are displayed is completely up to the individual. 
I might have Sprint as my first unlock and Ammo as my second unlock. Somebody else might have Flak Jacket as their first unlock and Grenades as their second unlock. So the order of those perks is completely up to the player uh, and you don't have to rely on your squad mates to make good perk decisions for you. Now here's where the system gets interesting. Once you rank up to level 3, there's no way to downrank yourself to level 2. You can't lose points. However, if your squad wipes, where all five members of the squad are killed, then your entire squad perk system gets reset and you have to rank it up all over again in that round. This gives you a huge incentive to keep your squad up and not let everybody get killed. Now, of course, squad wiping in Battlefield 3 wasn't that uncommon. It was pretty common for four players to try and push an objective and for them to all get wiped out. However, now we have five players. That's going to be a little bit trickier to deal with. In fact, I'd say it's going to be a lot trickier to deal with. So squad wiping is definitely going to be less common in Battlefield 4, but it's going to have a bigger impact of not just being able, not just uh, losing your spawn spots of your squad mates, but now you're going to lose all those squad perks in the same process. So it really does give you a lot of incentive to try and keep your squad alive and healthy and working together. So back to the gameplay here, I'm taking a ride in the Venom transport helicopter. It's got the same miniguns on the side. It's a lot of fun. I will say the Venom is a lot more agile. The flying mechanics are a bit different. I like them more now. It feels more agile, a little bit trickier to fly, but at the same time, I think once you master the new flying system, you are going to be able to get around a little bit more nimbly, especially in the transport heli. So I bail out here, I'm playing the engineer class, and I've got the cool Scorpion Evo uh, submachine gun. And I've also got some 45 degree angle offsites here, iron offsites, and uh, I'm gonna switch up to those. Now by default, by pressing T allows you to switch up to that. You can hit T uh, while you're aiming down sights to switch them, or you can hit T while the gun is at your side, and next time you zoom in, it will alternate sights. Now the setup I'm using here doesn't make a lot of sense. To have a red dot sight and then offset iron sights really makes no sense at all, really. The red dot sight is just going to be a superior sighting system. However, if you have a really high optic sight, six times zoom, eight times zoom, even four times zoom, and then you have the iron sight on the side, it could be very useful for switching between those long range and close quarter situations. And speaking of optics, if you're real quick here, you're going to see when I switch to my pistol, I actually have it equipped with a red dot sight. So you now have several optic options for pistols. Uh, I think that's going to be really cool. Pistols have way more customization now. Suppressors, lasers, sights, those are all individual attachments that you can customize at will. Now I've got a lot more footage from E3 and a lot more information. I don't want to pack it all into one crazy long video and frankly you can probably hear it in my voice. I'm a little bit tired right now. I've been sort of talking really loud all day just because of the extremely loud music throughout the convention center. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to have a lot more cool footage and information coming to you in the next few days. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.